Oh, give me a chip. You're almost late. Right on time then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever. Well, that doesn't really fill me with hope. Relax. May I remind you of last time? As far as I recall, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. When are you gonna learn to start trusting me? The day I don't have to go to therapy. <laughs> yeah, it makes two of us. Mm. Can I get your therapist number? Absolutely not. Let's go. Welcome back to another self-tape challenge review video. If you don't know by now, this is a chance for actors to learn and practice doing self-taped audition scenes together. By recording them watching the same scene again and again, you get a chance to see what the casting department sees when they watch audition tapes alongside others. Perhaps you'll notice what made certain people stand out, or see how their character choices made an impact on how you viewed them as an actor. There are two characters in this scene, Alex and Charlie, and I received a ton of tapes for this challenge, so thank you so much to everyone who took the opportunity to go through the motions and practice submitting an audition as if this was for a real casting call. I watched every single one and I genuinely wish I could show more in this review. But to keep this as concise as possible, I'm going to show a handful that stood out and we can talk about and learn from them together. So let's get started with Ariana playing Charlie. Oops, excuse me, sorry. Ooh, give me a chip. You're almost late. Right on time then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever. That doesn't really fill me with hope. Relax. May I remind you of last time? As far as I recall, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. When are you going to learn to start trusting me? The day I don't have to go to therapy. That makes two of us. Hey, can I get your counselor's number? Absolutely not. Let's go. This was nicely done. Her technicals in terms of framing, lighting, and sound were all good. You can tell she's comfortable in the space. She sets up her eyeline on the opposite side of camera really well at the beginning, and those moments where she breaks eye contact and looks back there are not only believable, but important to keep it interesting. Also, her relationship to her reader seemed genuine, even though they may not have been there physically, so that worked well. She could have picked up the pace a little in another version, and that would have brought it to life even more, but good job, Ariana. Now let's take a look at Tyranny playing Alex. Give me a chip. You're almost late. Right on time then. You know what, just tell me you're ready, right? Ready as ever. For some reason that doesn't fill me with hope. Relax. Relax? Do I have to remind you about last time? As far as I recall, we got away with it. <laughs> exactly. We got away with it. When are you going to learn to start trusting me? The day that I stopped needing counselling. That makes two of us. Hey, can I get your counsellor's number? Absolutely not. Let's go. This was his first ever self-tape and it was honestly great. Moments seemed spontaneous rather than preset. Again, the lines for Charlie were read virtually rather than physically, but it wasn't an issue. I really liked how he used his angles to add movement and indicate subtext. The use of the watch, chip packet and bag were nice natural distractions for the character without being too distracting to us as an audience. He also added nice moments of stillness and I found myself smiling at the end which is always a good sign because I know I liked the character. Similar to Ariana, he could have picked up the pace a little and raised the camera more to eye level next time, but considering this was his first tape I have to say really well done Tyranny. I could definitely see you doing more work in the future. Up next is Grace. Give me a chip. You're almost late. Right on time then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever. That doesn't really fill me with hope. <laughs> Relax. May I remind you of last time? As far as I recall, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. When are you going to learn to start trusting me? Today I don't have to go to therapy. <laughs> that makes two of us. Hey, can I get your counsellor's number? Absolutely not. Let's go. I'm sure that once again when you're watching these scenes in this setting where they're all back to back you're realising that even by the third tape the dialogue starts to blend in and isn't your focus anymore. It becomes secondary to the character and that's exactly what happens in a casting situation. We're focusing on you as the actor and the character you're creating instead so trying to nail the words on the page or even using them as a template for your character is not going to help you stand out. Most actors aren't thinking about this when they audition and aren't able to see the bigger picture and that's usually the person on the other end watching them all exactly like we are now. Grace did well with her pacing and charm in this tape. She also used those alternate eyelines well to create a sense of the setting and it looks like she's having fun. She showed us her qualities and personality in 30 seconds and that's what's important in these kind of auditions. 
You're trying to communicate your qualities to a casting director in as short a space of time as possible so that they know what you're right for and where to place you moving forward. One thing you could have done to make it even more interesting is turned and opened up her body to the reader around the start trusting me line. That one movement would have naturally progressed the relationship in the scene and given us a new perspective that we haven't seen in the first 20 seconds. But this was well done. Now let's take a look at Matt. Oh, give me a chip. You're almost late. Right on time then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever. That doesn't really feel me to hope. Oh, relax. May I remind you of last time? Well, as far as I recall, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. When are you going to learn to start trusting me? The day I don't have to go to therapy. <laughs> that makes two of us. Hey, can I get your counsellor's number? Absolutely not. Let's go. <laughs> All right. This was a nice tape. There was a slightly unpredictable quality to Matt's character and that was really interesting. His anglement he could choose when to look at the reader and similar to Grace he could have actually switched it up this time by starting up facing the reader and then turning to the angle he adopted for most of the scene on the ready as ever line. Even turning back perhaps to face on the counsellor's number line. Those are small choices that sometimes happen spontaneously and often it's better to let them happen naturally rather than pre-planning them. But that's a minor detail in an otherwise great audition tape. Well done, Matt. I can tell you've incorporated some of my feedback from the last challenge and you still maintained your charm in this character. Now let's take a look at Luther's version of Alex. Give me a chip. Ah, almost late. Right on time, then. Just tell me. You ready? Ready as ever. That doesn't really fill me with hope. Relax. May I remind you of last time? As far as I recall, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. When are you going to learn to start trusting me? The day I don't have to go to therapy. <laughs> that makes the two of us. Hey, can I get your counselor's number? Absolutely not. Let's go. Now, Luther's tape is a good example for us to discuss a trap that quite a few people fell into, and that was relying on the character's lines of dialogue to build out the rest of the character. I actually liked her delivery and comfort on camera. She found a unique rhythm that wasn't on the page, and you can tell she's a good actor. So yes, while Alex sounds exasperated and frustrated in the script, you have to remember in a casting context, 90% of actors are going to play that and only that. And that's what happened with a lot of people's tapes for this character. It's those that found their own version or some positive and unique qualities to hang on to that stood out. I've talked recently about status in relationship in a scene and Luther definitely found a superior territory here that worked nicely. It would have been nice to see her add in an extra eyeline or two on the other side of camera to break up her one to the reader. She had a nice angle at the very beginning, which she could have turned back to at some point or even refrained from turning to face the reader until later in the scene, rather than when he first arrived. Nevertheless, her character wasn't devoid of confidence or belief, and those were her positive qualities that shone through here. If she did another version, I'd ask her to find even more of the fun in the scene, perhaps toying and teasing with Charlie, as if she knew she could do this without him anyway. Good job, Luther. Remember to find the joy and the pleasure in every scene and you will deliver more great tapes. I have no doubt about that. Up next is Simon. Give me a chip. You're almost late. Right on time, then. Just tell me you're ready. Yeah, ready as ever. That doesn't really fill me with hope. Relax. May I remind you of the last time? As far as I recall, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. When are you going to learn to start trusting? The day I don't have to go to therapy. <laughs> yeah, that makes two of us. Hey, can I get your counselor's number? Absolutely not. Let's go. Simon's tape was nicely done. From a technical perspective, everything was great. His reader allowed him to rattle along at a nice pace and he was clearly listening to her with his own brand of charm. I would have urged him to play even more into the cheeky side of his character and perhaps flirted his way through the scene even more. Finding those different eyelines and not feeling as compelled to eyeball the reader may have helped him with that too. It would have been nice to see him play a version where he's completely at ease and carefree, almost ignoring her at times as he said his lines out into the world. It's those little things that can really elevate a scene to the next level and can separate one trained actor from another in an audition setting. Good job, Simon. Up next is Dami. Oh, give me a chip. You're almost late. Right on time then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as if. That doesn't really fill me with hope. Relax. May I remind you of last time? 
As far as I can recall, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. When are you gonna learn to start trusting me? The day I don't have to go to therapy? Well, that makes two of us. Can I get your conscience number? Absolutely not. Let's go. Once again, Demi has delivered her own brand of charm and energy in her version that clearly gets her qualities as an actor across to us. She was playing with angles and eyelines perfectly without being too crazy. She created moments that weren't on the page and in doing so separated her character from the text. They weren't bold or out there choices, they were suitable and relevant to the scene and that's what's most important. After watching this, you can clearly imagine her in a school setting and it's these kind of tapes that make casting directors think, hey, she may not be perfect for this role in this kind of show, but I know exactly what she is perfect for in the future. This was another good tape. Let's move on to Grace, this time playing Alex. Give me a chip. You're almost late. Right on time then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever. Doesn't really fill me with hope. Relax. May I remind you what happened last time? As far as I recall, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. When are you going to learn to start trusting me? The day I don't have to go to therapy. That makes two of us. Hey, can I get your counselor's number? Absolutely not. Let's go. I really like Grace's version. Her eyeline and distractions on the opposite side of screen worked well and you can tell she's comfortable on camera. My feedback to Grace would be similar to Luta's in that she could have found more of the fun in the scene and played toward that. Her body language with the folded arms tells us all we need to know in terms of her relationship to Charlie. So now it's about finding territory where she can find as likable a version of Alex as possible. One thing she could have tried is playing with status by using the method of substitution. Perhaps substituting the relationship to the reader with that of a younger sibling or cousin. How would she play the scene if it was a naive kid opposite her? Instead of the relationship being equal, now all of a sudden she becomes superior and way more at ease, with a feeling that she's in control of the situation and joking with Charlie, rather than actually worrying about what they're about to do. This was good work, just remember Grace that in an audition setting, when you're competing with a dozen other actors, all of the same ability, we as an audience want to like you. So regardless of the dialogue, find the charm in your character and the joy in the scene. Well done. Up next is Luke. Give me a chip. Oi, you're always late. Yeah, right on time. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as hell. That, that doesn't fill me with a lot of hope. Relax. May I remind you of what happened last time? Yeah, as far as I recall, we got away with exactly. it. Exactly. We got away with it. Yeah. So when are you going to learn to start trusting me? I don't know, maybe the day I don't have to go to therapy? That makes two of us. Can I get your counsel's number? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> This was a good scene. Luke had great pacing and natural delivery. He utilized those multiple eyelines and in fact I think he could have used them even more actually. His character had a sketchy quality to him and that would have lent towards him checking out the patrons of the diner, perhaps scouting the room for threats and vulnerabilities. His reader was great and you can tell there was a nice chemistry there too. It looks like he's having fun and that translates really well. Now I want to talk a little bit about props and the use of the knife. One of the main things I've talked about with props is that they should be minimal and subtle, not distracting to us as the viewer. Pulling out a knife is a big move and a bold statement for the character, and while it's certainly a valid choice, I think Luke actually pulled it out too early here. It immediately draws our attention away from him, so if he'd instead pulled it out at the last three seconds as he's laughing, it would have had the exact same impact and may have been even more powerful for this scene and his character. So Luke, there are so many things you got right here. I really enjoy the character you created. Just think about that use of the knife and what it communicates and when. When are you gonna learn to start trusting me? When are you gonna learn to start trusting me? When are you gonna learn to start trusting me? When are you gonna learn to start trusting me? When are you gonna learn to start trusting me? When are you gonna learn to start trusting me? When are you gonna learn to trust me? One of the main barometers to use when you're casting a show or judging a successful tape is whether or not you want to see more of that person. Did the tape make you want to watch more of that person in that character or perhaps the next scene they're in? This is why it's important to try and find the charm and the fun in a scene because it makes you interesting and eminently rewatchable. Speaking of charm, here's CJ. Give me a chip. You're almost late. Right on time then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever. That isn't filling me with hope. Relax. May I remind you of last time? As far as I can recall, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. When are you going to start trusting me? The day that I don't have to go to therapy. <laughs> that makes the two of us. Can you give me the counselor's number? Absolutely not. Hmm. Let's go. 
CJ has charm and comfort in spades. He was natural and likable. What he now needs to work on are those technical details, raising the camera to eye level, incorporating more angles to the reader, adding in more eye lines on both sides of camera and sprinkling in those natural distractions we've been talking about. Combining all of these elements will really make him pop because it's often the charm and natural comfort that are hardest to work on with most actors. The physical and technical details are easier to solve, so good work CJ, I look forward to the next one. Up next is Carrie. Hey, give me a chip. You're almost late. Right on time then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever. Doesn't really fill me with hope. Relax. May I remind you of the last time? I think I recall that we got away with it. Exactly, we got away with it. <laughs> when are you going to learn to start trusting me? The day I don't have to go to therapy. <laughs> that makes two of us. Hey, can I give Katz his number? Absolutely not. I liked how she didn't rely on volume in her tape. The lines came naturally and the pace was great. One of the major traps that a lot of people fall into is that the pace of their scene is dictated by the pace of their reader, meaning that their reader slows them down by letting moments linger or having moments of dead air. If you're ever recording a scene and think, why is this not feeling right? Sometimes it can be down to your pace being dictated by the reader. In that instance, you can either ask them to speed up or slow down and see how that affects the rhythm of the scene. Kerry did a good job here. She found some good eye lines on the opposite side of camera that worked nicely. I think next time to make it feel even more natural, she could add in more distractions by building out more of the set in her head and lean on that. So not distractions for distractions sake, they need to feel real and relevant. But everything in terms of comfort and charm worked well here. Good job. Now let's take a look at Finton. Nah, give me a chip. You're almost late. Right on time then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever? Well, that doesn't really fill me with hope. Relax. May I remind you of what happened last time? As far as I recall, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. But when are you going to learn to start trusting me? The day I don't have to go to therapy. Right next to us. Hey, can I get your counsel number? Absolutely not. Let's go. Now, Finton found a territory that almost no one else found with Alex, and that was one of complete superiority and authority. It was almost a status in relationship that could be compared to a principal and a student, and it worked really well. He seemed completely unfazed and in control of the situation, and that helped create a character that wasn't necessarily on the page. Because his eye contact is so powerful, I would have liked to see him perhaps x-ray the room a little more analyzing potential threats or obstacles so that when he did return that icy glare to the reader, it would have been even more powerful. It wasn't without moments of charm either, but he could have added in more of an attitude of there's no way this won't succeed if I'm in charge kind of vibe, because then that gives off a supreme confidence and adds another positive layer to the threatening and calculated character he created here. Perhaps he could have adopted a little more of an angle to the reader and added an extra eyeline to the opposite side of camera, even for just a moment. But this is another great example of Finton communicating his quality for the types of roles he's perfect for. I look forward to the next one. Now let's take a look at Rachel's version of Charlie. Oh, give me a chip. Ow! You're almost late. Right on time then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever. That doesn't really fill me with hope. Would you relax? May I remind you of last time? As far as I ever got, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. When are you going to start trusting me? The day I don't have to go to therapy. <laughs> that makes two of us. Hey, can I have your counselor's number? Absolutely not. Let's go. This was nice. Rachel was charming throughout, and you can tell she's having fun with the scene. Her chemistry with the reader was clear, and the angle of her shoulders worked well. One thing I did notice was that when Alex spoke, she still felt the need to look at him. And while that's completely fine, it would have been nice if she'd ignored him or not felt as compelled to look at him on certain lines. Instead, she could have looked around the diner, checked out the wait staff, or watched the people on the table next to them. Good job, Rachel. Keep charming, having fun, and building those relationships to the reader. Up next is Zion. Give me a chip. We're almost late. Right on time, then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever? It doesn't really fill me with hope. Relax. May I remind you of last time? As far as I recall, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. When are you going to learn to start trusting me? The day I don't have to go to therapy. <laughs> Well, that makes two of us. Hey, can you give me your counselor's number? Absolutely not. Let's go. 
Firstly, the pace was great. This was the more serious and threatening version of Charlie that we didn't see from many others. And honestly, it was completely valid. His angle to the reader and eye lines across the room worked nicely. I think he could have framed in a slightly looser shot, so zoomed out a bit more with more headroom, but it wasn't a deal breaker. Even when creating a more intimidating character, he could have worked in a few more smiles as he reminisced about last time, and that would have made him more appealing and appear more unhinged too. Similar to Finton, adding charm and flirt to a character like this is a win-win because it makes you even more of a presence and actually makes you more menacing, almost as if we don't know what you're going to do next. Think of Christoph Waltz's performance in Inglorious Bastards. He was charming, unpredictable, and dangerous, and he still flirted his way through every scene. Up next is Taylor. Hey! Give me a chip. You're almost late. Right on time, then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever. That doesn't exactly fill me with hope. Oh my god, relax. Come on. May I remind you of last time? Okay, as far as I know, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. When do you learn to start trusting me? The day I don't have to go to therapy? <laughs> yeah, it makes two of us. Mm. Can I get your therapist number? Absolutely not. Let's go. I really liked this tape. Taylor found moments in a rhythm that were unique to her and it flowed really nicely. What I think she could have done to elevate it further is sprinkle in a bit more cheekiness into the mix and that would have naturally made us gravitate to her even more. The technicals in terms of distractions and eyelines were great though and she definitely created an interesting character that stood out. So well done. Up next is Sarah. Give me a chip. You're almost late. Right on time then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever. That doesn't really fill me with hope. Relax! May I remind you of last time? As far as I recall, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. When are you going to learn to start trusting me? The day I don't have to go to therapy. <laughs> Makes two of us. Hey, can I get your counselor's number? Absolutely not. Let's go. This was an interesting one because I think Sarah actually grew into the scene as it went along. She started off playing into disdain but ended up in an area of genuine charm. You can tell she has a real presence and is comfortable on camera. I think the next step for her in this particular tape would have been to play around with the subtleties, throw out the dialogue more and just go in with the goal of flirting. She's naturally expressive so if she's feeling an emotion we see it straight away. So moving forward it's about playing around with adjectives, intentions and status to create tapes that will really pop. Good job Sarah. Up next is Ella. <laughs> mm, give me a chip. You're almost mm -hmm. late. Right on time then. <laughs> Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever. That doesn't fill me with a lot of hope. Relax. May I remind you of the last time? As far as I recall, we got away with it, didn't we? Exactly. We got away with it. Shit. When are you going to learn to start trusting me? Today I don't have to go to therapy. <laughs> oh, that makes two of us. Hey, can I get the number to your counselor? Absolutely not. Let's go. I really love this tape. Everything about it from the spontaneous moments, unpredictability, distractions, eye lines, charisma, and sense of fun all came together to create an awesome audition. Her pacing was helped by her reader and she also found true moments of stillness along the way without seeming preset or pre-planned. This was probably the best example of wanting to see more. We liked her and wanted to keep watching more of her in this particular character. Great job, Ella. If this was a real casting, you would definitely get called back, so really well done. Up next is Lucy. Oh, give me a chip. You're almost right. <laughs> well, I'm done then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever. That doesn't really fill me with hope. Relax. May I remind you of the last time? If I recall, we got away with it. Exactly. We got away with it. When are you going to learn to trust me? The day I don't have to go to therapy. Mm, that makes two of us. Hey, can I get Cancer's number? Absolutely not. Let's go. As far as I know, this is Lucy's second ever tape after our last challenge, and the fact that she's already producing tapes like this is awesome. Similar to her first one, she's finding subtle moments and now combining it with nice angles and eye lines in this one as well. There was a real undercurrent of charm and fun in this tape and that made her likeable too. Lucy has an earnest quality that really lends itself to types of roles you see in shows all the time. So if I were her, once I was comfortable with the process of self-taping and feeling consistent with my delivery, I'd start thinking about working towards doctors, nurses, teachers, policewomen, 
mothers, etc., the kind of roles you see in shows often, and just playing into them with all the same qualities she's delivering here. You can almost picture her in any of those small roles, so if someone like me can see that, it wouldn't take too much for an agent or casting director to see it too. Finally, let's take a look at Johan's version of Charlie. You're almost late. Right on time then. Just tell me you're ready. Ready as ever. It doesn't really fill me with a lot of hope. Relax. May I remind you of last time? As far as I recall, we got away with it. Exactly. Yeah. We got away with it. Yeah. When are you going to learn to start trusting me? The day I don't have to go to therapy. <laughs> Me and you both. Hey, can I get the number to your counselor? Absolutely not. <laughs> Let's go. Mm. Come on. Now it's obvious that Johan and Ella recorded their tapes together, so I'm not too sure why Johan was framed slightly differently to Ella, but it could have worked better if his was similar to hers in this instance. Other than that, the technical details were nice. They have great chemistry, unique rhythms, and you can tell this was a lot of fun. I think after a certain point in this take, the fries were almost too much of a distraction for him as they became his sole focus and so we as the audience started to focus on them too. Sometimes this happens with props and as I've said before, if you keep them subtle and not distracting, they can work well. In this case, I think he could have put them back down around the trust me line and instead looked to utilize an alternate eye line around the room, which would have been nice. The fries were an interesting addition. He just lent on them a little too much towards the second half. This was still a really good and natural tape. There just could have been a few tweaks to make it even better. So great job. You and Ella have a great partnership going and I can tell you've been thinking about some of the techniques I've been talking about. I can't wait to see what you do next. And that wraps up the tapes for this self-tape challenge. I hope you enjoyed watching how everyone interpreted the scene and created their own characters. As I've mentioned, all these versions were completely valid for the script. And when it comes to casting, we're often looking for the right fit for the role in terms of the character and tone seeing who might fit with who and matching them together like a jigsaw. For example, there could have been a great version of this scene where Luke played opposite Finton, Grace could have played opposite Tyranny, or Ella played opposite the other Grace. Each of those scenes would have been completely unique and interesting. So that's why I say you should always try to portray an authentic version of yourself in every character you play. Because then directors and casting directors get a consistent and clear understanding of your qualities and start to subconsciously try and find the right match for you. Let me know whether you enjoyed this exercise, what you learned from watching everyone else and what you think you can work on in the future. I'm always happy to give you feedback on your work, so feel free to reach out if you ever want a second opinion or would just like to hear my thoughts on what you can work on. Thanks again to everyone who submitted their tapes for this challenge. I wish I could have shown more and really hope you got something out of putting down this scene. Remember, that's exactly what this exercise is for, learning from others and realizing what you perhaps could do differently next time in a real audition to make yourself stand out. If you take one thing away from this video, let it be the in an audition, character is king. Those actors who actually create a character and relationship separate from the dialogue are the ones that stand out, rather than those trying to be the best actor. So thanks for watching, have a great week everyone, and I look forward to watching more of your work soon.